pretty we return now to our continuing coverage of Iran and all that's taking place there. Thousands of people have converged on the streets of Tehran in defiance of the Ayatollah Khomeini's order yesterday that any protesters who do take to the streets are doing so by breaking the law. Our next guest is a woman who is keeping close tabs on the situation in Iran. She has friends, she has family there, she lives here in the United States, and she's also an author of a book here, Melody Moisey, an Iranian-American author of War on Error, Real Stories of American Muslims. Good to see you, Melody. Great to see you. Okay, you have been having conversations with your friends and family just as soon as a few moments ago when I saw you on the phone trying to have a clear conversation. But it's not easy, especially when it involves a landline. Explain to me how you, what kind of vocal gymnastics you have to do when you reach yeah. out to friends and family there. Um, well, I've been calling friends and family to talk to them and hear what they have to say. And it turns out that the second I say, well, what's the situation like? I learned this early on. Once I said, what's the situation like? Immediately, when I was on a landline, it cut off. Uh, this happened to me twice in a row. Um, ultimately, I figured out how to say, you know, well, I know you support Ahmadinejad. I know that you're supporting the government, but just tell me what's going on with the opposition. And some of my family and friends do support Ahmadinejad. Because everyone, but you and the party involved, are all certain government is listening to conversations, or you feel I don't like know it's a strange why it's getting coincidence. Disconnected. Yeah, it's a strange coincidence <laughs> to be to be cut off. Yeah. So when you see the numbers of people who are taken to the streets, whether it be earlier in the week or even now, in defiance of the Ayatollah's order. Do you suspect that anyone you know may have taken to the streets uh, or anyone that you know is, who is expressing fear or concern for those who do take to the streets? Yeah, I mean, I know people are, are going and I, I know that some of my friends will be going um, and it makes me very nervous um, and I'm scared. But more than that, I am so proud. I'm so proud to be Iranian and especially today. Um, I think I'm more proud to be Iranian today than I've ever been. Why? How are you calculating what's taking place there? I think it's, in, it's the most historic thing that's happened in my lifetime. I was born the year of the revolution. I did not see that, um, but I have lived it. I saw what life was after the revolution, and I hear stories about what life was like before the revolution, and it wasn't great, but it was very different. And I, the possibility of things changing um, from what I've known my entire life is amazing and that my generation would lead that um, is just astonishing to me and I, I have so much pride for for Iran today. It's been about 10 years, am I correct, yeah. since you were last there, um, yet watching it kind of long distance right. and having that connection, mm -hmm. family, friends still there, is there a part of you that says you want to be there now uh, to witness this part of history? no matter which side you may be on, um, just to see for yourself or experience it for yourself? In my heart, that's where I want to be. Um, but I have a head, too, and my head tells me you don't want to be there. I've written things and publicly said things that are against the government. I write for the Huffington Post and have been writing a lot lately for them. So you think uh, it the would be difficult? That I've been would it be difficult not, for you to, yeah. to, to be allowed to enter? I think I may be allowed to enter because I do have Iranian citizenship, mm -hmm. but in terms of what will happen after I enter the country, I am not sure. Um, that's why I think it's so important that the people who are outside of Iranian, Iran, Iranian Americans in particular, we have the freedom to say what we want to say. They are standing up and risking their lives. The least we can do is stand up and say, you know what, maybe this will mean I can't go back to Iran, <laughs> but they may die. You know, maybe I won't be able to go back, but I fully believe that I will go back to Iran. I will just go back to Iran when it is no longer a so-called Islamic Republic, which is highly un-Islamic to begin with. Well, you know, what's very clear, there is no monolith thinking. And the same can be said about your family. Whether you have family members here or even in Iran, everyone feels differently about what's transpiring right. there. And so uh, I'm curious to know what kind of dinner table kind of conversations, even long distance dinner table conversations right. are taking place. Are you all engaging in, in you know, uh, real passionate discussions about how you all see this differently or how you yeah. might be in agreement? Yeah, it's sort of like the parents and the kids, and I count as a kid in this situation, but it's the parents being like, be careful, we've seen what happened with our revolution and we thought it was going to go well and look how it turned out. It didn't turn out like we thought it would. A lot of people who supported the revolution in 1979 did not expect it to turn out like it did, did not expect a theocratic state to come into 
Iran, Iran, if it's an Islamic state, Islam teaches in the Quran that there should be no compulsion in religion. Uh, so a lot of Iranians thought, okay, well, they will take that in, to heart when they create an Islamic Republic. And the true Islamic Republic is a secular republic, a secular democracy. And I think that's what the people there are headed for. And I think the kids are talking to their parents and their parents are like, watch out. And they're like, you know, we've had enough. We're 30 years old. We've been living under this government for 30 years. Give us a break. And what really is interesting, just as you bring up the, the age 30, half of the Iranian population under 30 or at least under the age of 25. And that's astounding because there is a real movement that we're seeing here, which seems to be led by that younger generation. Yeah, that's really exciting to me. The majority of the Iranian population is younger than the revolution itself. Mm. So that's, that's the situation. I've always seen it, like I said, and I've been in the streets of Tehran with my mom, and she, I, I remember once specifically, we were about to cross the street, which is an effort inside of Iran, but we we're about to cross the middle of the street, and she, she just started crying. And I was like, what's wrong? And she's like, I never thought this would happen. Oh. I never thought this would happen. So just so many people who initially supported that revolution, it just turned on them. Um, and that's what we're afraid of, because we know what we do not want. We don't want a Shah. We don't want to go back to that. We don't want imper American imperialism. We want to be independent. That's the great thing that Ayatollah Khomeini brought to us was independence. And then, so, but uh, we've moved past that, you know? So we, at the same time, don't want the status quo. But then we don't know what we, we do want. You know, we know what we don't want. <laughs> but when it comes to figuring out what we do actually want, uh, you know, we don't know what to do. And I mean, I was saying I wrote, or I write for the Huffington Post. I had written something recently about Shirin Abadi, who is the 2003 Nobel Peace Prize winner inside of Iran. She's an attorney. She used to be a judge. And what I wrote was Shirin Abadi. The title was Shirin Abadi for president. Um, and I, it probably won't happen, but that's who I, and she's a woman, a very strong woman, very powerful, internationally respected. And that's who I thought should be the president. And you would not believe how many emails I got back from that single article in just support saying, of or in support in of are you starting an organization <laughs> and I, was, I don't know but if she and MLD is listening <laughs> we want you to run i think i think a woman leading this a woman at the head of this is what we need okay yeah. melody moise <laughs> thanks so much very outspoken Thank you. very interesting and uh, i'd love to be on the phone as you and family members talk just to see how electric <laughs> we'll arrange it that sometimes okay, that sounds good good deal all right melody i appreciate it thanks Thank so you. much all right well the latest on the iranian protest right here from the newsroom.